Congressman, thanks so much for being here. You bet. Good evening, Katie. So what do you think about this uh, Arlen Specter situation? He's defected. He's now a Democrat. Uh, did you see that as a low blow? How did you interpret that move? Well, I didn't like it, that's for sure. Um, it wasn't really too surprising, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, he's been a uh, survivalist, and he, it was very clear that he wasn't going to win the Republican primary. A former colleague of mine, a good friend of mine, Pat Toomey, was going to challenge him. He was up, I think, 21 points in the polls. So it was clear to Arlen Specter he was not going to win staying as a Republican. And I think he made a decision, which he's admitted to, just in order to win this election, he decided to convert to a Democrat. He's voted that way many times. So it really, at the end of the day, isn't too surprising. Um, this is more of a Pennsylvania political thing. And um, this is how he thinks he can win re-election as a Democrat. He, Unfortunately he, for us, you know, it's the 60th vote. This is, a, this is a big vote. This is the 60th vote, which means they can sustain filibusters. Well, if Al Franken wins, if Al Franken wins. Yeah, and most of us think that that's going to happen. Well, what, what do you think about Arlen Specter's uh, description of, of the Republican Party? It's just too much to the right. It, it doesn't make room for moderates. That's something that was echoed by Olympia Snow today in an op-ed in the New York Times. Um, you know, she called it devastating. She criticized the party for what she referred to as it ex exclusionary policies and views toward moderate Republicans. I mean, isn't this a bit of a, a reality check for the GOP? In some ways, I think it is. And I'm a conservative, but I will tell you, we need to be a big tent party. We can't have an 18-point litmus test that you must apply to to first get let into the party. If you believe in free enterprise, limited government, self-determination, the principles that built America, if those are the principles you believe in, join us. We want you to be with us, and we can, we can squabble over the other details, but the core issues that built this country, that are the core of this party, we can all agree on, moderate conservative, we got to have a big tent, and I would argue our party needs to be more inclusive so that people like Olympia Snow feel extremely comfortable being in the party. But in Arlen Specter's case, I think this was really more of a case of expediency. I don't think he would have done this had he thought he would be handily win his nomination it, as a re in the Republican Party. I think he did this so he could stay and win, and that he had to become a Democrat to do that. But, you know, we keep hearing, I mean, we, <clears throat> Lee Atwater talked about the big tent back in the early 80s, and, and it seems like a, a lot of rhetoric at this point in time, Congressman. How can you make it more inclusive? And a lot of Republicans are afraid that they will be challenged, as Arlen Specter has been, by a more conservative Republican, and they'll get in trouble for voting with the president, as Arlen Specter did on the stimulus package. So how do you do, how do you serve both masters, if you will. I don't see it as serve both masters. I see it as serving the principles that we believe in, the principles that founded this country. I think the biggest problem that we've had in our party is we were hypocrites on fiscal issues. Most people used to think of the Republican Party as the fiscally conservative, responsible party. That was the tallest pole in our tent that unified people, moderate and conservative. We took an axe to that poll over the years with earmarks, with overspending. We did not do the job we should have done, and we couldn't, we can't be fiscal conservatives and say we're fiscal conservatives if the kinds of things that Republicans had done in the past. I'll mind you, I fought against a lot of these things, but I think the main thing that kept Republicans together was fiscal conservatism, responsibility. That was a checkered past. But now, if you take a look at where we are, we're going in the complete opposite direction. The criticisms that Republicans had had in the past about not being fiscally conservative enough, the, the, the new majority party, the Democrats, are taking that and extending it so far beyond. And we have a budget that passed today that doubles the national debt in five and a half years and triples it in 10 and a half years. We have 1.5 trillion in new tax increases in the middle of a recession. So I think that's not what the American people are wanting. The American people kicked the Republicans out for being hypocrites on fiscal issues and spending in so many ways, and now the Democrats are repeating the same mistakes we made then. Trust me when I say we made those mistakes, and we're seeing the new majority party repeat those mistakes in spades. Who do you think are the leaders? Who are the up-and-comers in the <clears throat> Republican Party? Bob Schieffer said earlier on the evening news, part of the problem is you all are leaderless. So who do you think are the leaders of your party right now? <clears throat> It's decentralized. I mean, we don't have a president. We have uh, majority leaders or minority leaders in the House and the Senate. We don't have one person or two or three people. What matters to me in our party is not what person is going to be our leader. What matters to me is what ideas we're going to propose to the American people. 
We need to take those principles we believe in, the principles that build this country, apply them to today's problems and show the American people a better way forward, innovative solutions. So it really doesn't matter to me what the name of the person is that's going to be a leader. What matters to me is the agenda we present to the American people so that American people have a choice of two different pathways. It's our job as the minority party to do two things. Tell the truth as we see it, show the facts, and offer people a choice. We need to offer the American people a choice. If we don't agree with this direction that the president and the majority party is taking America, and in most of the issues today we don't, then it's up to us to offer alternatives so that the American people end up getting better government out of that process and they have real choices. That's right. what we've got to do rather than pick a person or two to be leaders. Congressman, uh, Jeff Greenfield has a quick question for you, and this is a webcast, so we're much more casual here, so hit yeah. it, Jeff. I'll keep my okay. <laughs> the list that you gave of fundamental principles, that's the same list Ronald Reagan uttered about 25 years ago, and then he said, as for the other issues that divide us, let's just recognize that people have different views and yet there are some in your party that don't accept that that literally would say that. if you don't buy us on particularly the hot button issues you're not a real republican is that one of your problems in some cases i think it is look i was my political mentor was jack kemp uh who worked very closely with ronald reagan during that period and we need to be a big tent party i'm a conservative i'm a social conservative but i also appreciate other people's views and i appreciate the fact that people may not share my views these core issues that I just said are the ones that ought to bind us. And if there are people who disagree on some of the other issues, that's fine. We'll have those disagreements. And that's the kind of party we're going to have to be if we want to be a legitimate majority party again in this country. All right, Congressman Paul Ryan, thanks a lot for stopping by. We appreciate it. You bet.